Welcome back to my channel. If you're on low carb diet, obviously when you're watching this or if you're new to the low carb approach, don't forget about your micronutrients or your vitamins. So today I want to share with you the importance of vitamins such as vitamin K and how it can be good for your health and for your bones. So before we begin, if you're unsure about your current medical condition, do always seek advice from your doctor and then understand from there what you should do moving forward or what deficiencies or vitamins or what kind of approach to your diet should you take, okay? So vitamin K, it is a fat soluble type of vitamin. So put it simply, if you take vitamin K together with some fats, it will be able to be digested properly. So vitamin K comes in two types. One of them is vitamin K1 and the other one is vitamin K2. So vitamin K1's main um, function will be as a blood clotting role. That means it helps your blood to coagulate. Let's say for example, you have a cut, then you want to stop the bleeding. And if your blood doesn't coagulate, it means that you will not stop bleeding, right? So vitamin K1 is essential to help the blood to coagulate and stop the bleeding from happening. And we usually consume about 80% of these K1, vitamin K1s from our green leafy vegetables. So that is why you should always have your vegetables and you can have your vitamin k1 intake from there but let's talk about vitamin k2 so vitamin k2 comes in a few subtypes and they're known as uh, minokinone minokinones okay so the ones that i'm going to talk about is minokinone 4 and minokinone 7 and in short it's mk4 and mk7 so they differ, their differentiation is mainly in the, the side chains and how long they are so that's a technical thing but you just need to know that MK4 comes mainly from animal products such as um, meat, liver, and eggs. And MK7, which is the important one that sometimes we cannot get that because of the type of food that it is found in. So MK7 is found in fermented foods such as uh, sauerkraut, kimchi, hard cheeses, and especially natto. Natto is a Japanese fermented food that has high concentration levels of MK7 type of vitamin K2. So if you want to have your vitamin K2, yeah, just go for more fermented foods. Of course, there are differences between them. So nattos are obviously the best and highest concentrated. And that's why in supplements, you can actually find that uh, it's usually made up from nattos. So importantly, then why is vitamin K2 good for you? So vitamin K2, primarily helps to bind calcium and then distributes the calcium into your bones surface rather than onto the surface of your arteries, which is a bad thing, right? If you deposit there, then you probably kickstart off uh, atherosclerosis, which is like the, the clogging of your arteries, put it simply. So you don't want that to happen. So you want the calcium to, to be deposited into your bones so you get better bone health. And also it helps to prevent your heart from getting worse or having any possibility of having heart disease. So vitamin K2 is essential in my opinion. And if you are somebody who consumes a lot of calcium, do think about having a vitamin K2 plan. But of course, speak to your doctor to see if you are deficient in that or is this something that you can approach on to. And if you are deficient in vitamin K, usually it will lead to osteoporosis, um, maybe even leading to some forms of heart disease. But of course, our body is multi-variable factors coming in. We can't just say that if we are lacking in one type of vitamin, this can cause a problem. But we need to see if we can help our heart or our whole body system. We can see what we can do and we try our best to complement it. As for toxicity, uh, I don't think there is any known specific amounts. Of course, again, you need to be able to understand what your current medical condition is. And if you're on blood thinness, obviously vitamin K1 is something that you need to be mindful of because it's a blood clotting Roll and you take a blood thinner which is trying to go the opposite way of preventing your blood from clotting due to heart diseases or you're having plaques formed in your arteries and they want to let your blood flow as smooth as possible. So having vitamin K1 may be something that you should be concerned with. So my final thoughts are there are no conclusive studies that compares that K2 is more superior to K1. So at the end of the day, you have to 
this into your own judgment. Talk to your doctor to see whether is this something that you can safely embark on. And it can be good for your health in preventing and also, especially for Keto, it can also help to put calcium into the right places instead of having into the arteries. So the question is, how much you should take? Of course, try to consume it as naturally as possible. But if you find that you do not like to consume foods that are heavily fermented, then of course, maybe you should consider taking a supplement. So I hope you like this video. If you do, please continue to like, subscribe, and then of course, hit that notification button. And I hope to see you in the next one. Peace.